Hi, Dr. Lee. We're very excited to present you this offer. You are the best candidate for this job. We're going to pay you $50 per hour. By the way, let's do eye naive evaluation. Where are you from? I'm from China. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Um, I mean $15 per hour, not $50. But you just told me $50. No, 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 no. $15. $15. Immigrants are frequently underpaid for various reasons, could be their own reason, cultural reason, or visa reason. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you why immigrants are underpaid and how we change the situation. Make sure to stay until the end of the video, where I share with you top three secrets to get paid fairly in the US. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director product and featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies, a unicorn startup, and continue to get promoted as a product leader. If you're interested in product management course, go to pmaccelerator.io to learn more. To learn the most effective way to become product manager, you should subscribe to the channel, turn the bell buttons to be notified every time I turn a new video every Tuesday. If you like the free tips we provide today, make sure to hit the like button. This is the only way YouTube algorithm will recognize me. As an immigrant myself, I understand the challenges of overworking and underpaid. I moved to the US with only $800 in my pocket and a few years later I became the director of product. But my very first job, I was significantly underpaid. But I didn't know how to speak up and at the time I thought, oh so lucky I had H1B sponsorship and I was working for a company and I was in the 2008 recession, nobody else can land a job, I can get a job! So it's okay to get underpaid! No it's not! I work 60 hours per week. And I also realized that this is a standard challenge among all immigrants. We frequently work long hours, we're underpaid, and we didn't know how to speak up for ourselves. How I discovered I was underpaid? And guess what? In my very first job as systems engineer working for Shell Oil, I spent time with a group of engineers. We just had a social happy hours and out my American coworker had five beers. They started to tell me some random stuff, start to brag about their salaries. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, you're getting paid $110,000 per year. And I got a PhD, I was only getting paid $90,000 per year. And we're doing almost the same type of job. That moment I was like, huh, that was crazy. I was so nervous because I was waiting for them to sponsor my green card and didn't even know what's the best way to really speak up about the problem. And later on, I realized that there are three reasons why immigrants are underpaid. And actually, there's news articles about how bad immigrants are underpaid, and here's what they said. Immigrants perform some Americans' lowest paying artist jobs and are among the most victimized by employers failing to pay them fairly. Even if they're supported by a lawsuit or a claim, but they often settle for less to get money faster or just wait as case drags along. So there are three reasons why the situation is so severe. Number one is politics. Because as we going through the election season again, you can see almost all the politicians like to talk about immigration issue, but they frequently make like immigrant really bad, people hate immigrant. But they mix match illegal immigrant versus people legally in the US who are on H1B. People like me and you guys potentially watching this video, you're on H1B on work visa, you must achieve certain type of education and you're an American not able to hire people to work for the type of jobs, they hire to hire international people to work for the same type of job in the US. So we are very well highly educated, highly skilled, but people frequently saying that oh, all immigrants are bad. So that's why the branding of immigrant and make us become a victim of people who didn't do well in the US and leading us get paid less and overworked. The second reason is that employers intentionally take advantage of immigrants who are on H1B and needs green card sponsorship. The reason is very obvious and usually takes a really, really long time to get a green card. If you watch this video right here, I feel in a full video, it took me 11 years to get a green card. Most people need company sponsorship to get those green card and H1B. And those employers frequently understand once people get into H1B lottery or get into green card, it's, they, it's this long holding and waiting period and for them to really get their freedom, which is H1B and green card. So therefore, people just stay there forever and they know they cannot change jobs. So therefore, they decide not to increase your salary at all. And frequently, it gives you the most difficult work and have you to work very long hours and you have no choice. Number three is a culture difference because American culture is very different from any other countries. In America, when kids were growing up, they were taught to be confident, to speak up for themselves. Even if they might know only 50% of the knowledge, they speak up as if they know like 100%. They were taught to speak out loud, even if they are not the best skilled people in the meeting room, however they thought they are. 
Now, for non-immigrant people like Asian culture, as an example, we frequently were taught being very humble and do not speak up. There's always people smarter than you. Just learn from other people. And actually, those kind of cultures are hosting against us because nobody can see our values if we don't speak up compared with how Americans speak up all the time. Are you also underpaid? Do you feel the same? Comment down below. However, there's always ways for immigrants to get paid more, even higher than American. Here are the top three strategies I want all of you guys to apply and execute. Number one is work for bigger companies and bigger employers. For example, any of my students who join fan companies, they're getting paid at least $300,000 per year. Some of them getting paid $800,000 per year by working for Meta. Of course, when big tech companies are having layoff, you can still work for tier one companies such as TikTok, Uber, even large companies such as Walmart, and Verizon. All the large companies, there's a standard of salary band. Regardless where you're from, are you on H1B, your gender and race, as long as you're in the same band, they cannot underpay you significantly, they cannot overpay you significantly. All the band are valued based on the skills you can present during the job interview. And you should also know how to negotiate your salary once you land job offer. For example, after I became a director product, I discovered that my manager, who is the executive director, he's only getting paid $25,000 higher than me but he's 15 years older than me yes I negotiate salary really high and also because I'm able to present myself in the job interview very well which leading to the second tips you should learn how to package your values and your experience past job interview and make the employer appreciate you for example this is real life stories and I currently have a student he's from Brazil in Brazil he's getting paid around $25,000 per year it's actually very low compared with US standard but relatively high in Brazilian standard but his goal is really work for US company working remotely so he can increase his income significantly so in the past he didn't know how to package his experience in, in Brazil he already have 10 years experience working in Brazil as a product manager with a lot of achievement but the company is relatively small nobody heard of so therefore when he interviewed with American companies he almost killed his dreams American company never give him opportunities and shut him down even the first round of interviews so he almost gave up his American dream however after he learned how to package his stories doing 30 seconds elevator pitch very well and guess what he was able to find three employers within one week and three employers on LinkedIn reach out to him and offer him interview opportunity for jobs paying him $160,000 up to $250,000 per year that's almost eight to ten times higher than how much he's getting paid back in Brazil so that's the main reason lots of immigrants didn't know the reason they were getting underpaid was because employer never see them better than us the people you really need to demonstrate your value show that hey I'm better than other candidate and number one candidate I can bring so much value to the table that's why I deserve getting paid this much and make sure to watch the 30 seconds elevator pitch video that's a step one showing your value to the employers I'm gonna link this video in the description in this video as well and I also have multiple Canadian citizens who are for US companies such as TikTok and who's getting paid as high as fan companies and they are just Canadian citizens and immigrant companies sponsor their work visa to move to the US but still pay them lots of money to work for these companies and she only have two years for a management experience you can do the same the key is to present yourself the best in job interviews number three it's learn how to talk about visa and green card challenges during the job interview. I frequently suggest people to proactively research about different visa issues, different ways to get visa or maybe remote job opportunities. Really do research very thoroughly. And you should also find your own lawyer on your agencies really help you to understand different kind of visa opportunities or green card opportunities or remote PM job opportunities so that you understand when you walk into the final round interview or even the first round interview when people ask you questions regarding so which visa status you know how to answer those questions you can tell them for example for some countries like Canada and you actually do not need H1B sponsorship you have something called TM visa you all you need is an offer letter from the company and then you can hire your own lawyer to make it happen and lots of time when company has their own lawyer you should still hire your own lawyer so have both lawyers working on the same case together this is the best way for you to optimize your own chance of landing this job offer and visa sponsorship and do not get discouraged about visa sponsorship or green card and there's another inspiring story guess what I was rejected 
by five different lawyers who apply for green card. All the lawyers in the past saying that, oh, you know what, Nancy, you got a PhD in material science, now you're a manager working on AI, software product. It's very different. Maybe you should go back to school to become a postdoc doing some material science research, and then you can get green card. But I didn't take no for an answer. I went through five lawyers until one lawyer said, I think there's an angle to top out your case and help you to get EB1B green card as well. Yes. Do not take no for an answer. This is also a way to make it happen. Of course, it took me 11 years to get my green card. <laughs> check out this video, check out all the details. But my point is that you have a really great opportunity being presented in front of you. I'm not saying that it's easy as an immigrant to create a new life in the US. I'm not saying that it's easy to get high paying job offer in the US. I'm saying that there's always a way. You should never give up too early. Never take no for an answer. You deserve a better life, better job, and create the life you deserve and you dreamed of and make your family proud. I have a playlist of videos teaching immigrants how to land a job in the US on H1B sponsorship. You should watch all the videos in this playlist right now and get ready for your American dream. If you like any free tips we provide today, make sure to like, share, and comment on this video. This is Dr. Nancy Lee from PMXerter.io. I'm gonna see you in my next video. Bye guys.